Okay, welcome back. Gonna go through some React stuff again here. And what I wanna do in this video is kinda talk about React components, stateful components, stateless components, functional components, like what are all these things. Um, in the, the tutorials I was going through earlier, the uh, FPV buildcock stuff, um, a lot of them I just went through very quickly and built things just to make the videos not boring. I didn't really talk a lot about why I was doing things. So I think it's probably good to just like take a minute, go through some of the project structure, kind of talk about different types of components and like what they are, why I built them, and and you know how you can um, how you can reason about things a little easier for different types of components. So first things first, let's. I just want to show this website here. It's um, the uh, ReactPatterns.com. They have a couple of different patterns, and I'm not sure if like this uh, vernacular here is completely things that that everybody's going to say in the industry but but the 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 one thing you probably want to know is and maybe this article is a little better I'll post both these links in the video is kind of just stateful versus stateless components and there's one term for stateless components called a functional stateless component that is really widely used and it's like highly lauded as being really easy to reason about and really, really uh, ideal to build your components in this manner. So let's talk about just a functional stateless. Well, first let's talk about state versus stateful. So in a component like this, this is just the about page, it has no state and it doesn't actually have any props either. So this is, this is definitely a very simple component, but let's go to something more complicated. Uh, let's talk about like this uh, product grid and this is if you remember on the site this is this this is the part that actually renders out this grid of products here so it's going to take a big list of these uh, things and, and render them out and that's what it's doing it's you've got these columns and then it's taking lists of items and rendering them out um, product grid has props passed to it but it doesn't have any internal state. And what I mean by that is there is no, there's something literally on a React class called state and you can put values in it. And if you don't have this state component or this state attribute being used inside of a React component, then your, your uh, component is called a stateless component. And that's good because your application, if you're building a Redux application, your state is going to be in Redux. That's like what's going on in your app, what the user has interacted with it, and what's been loaded. It should all be in your state store in Redux. It shouldn't really be scattered around inside of stateful components inside of React. Um, and there are exceptions when you can do this where it's not a big deal. But generally speaking, this is this is the kind of thing you want to build. There, it It's actually fairly complicated. It's doing a lot of complicated things here. But all it does is take properties and then it returns something based on exactly what you passed in for the properties so that makes it that makes it really easy to test too right because all you have to do is pass in certain combinations of properties and you can test every possible outcome right now if you have internal state that you have to manage inside of this component you need to try to reset that between runs or like now you have to worry about all these extra variables like if you pass this props in but the state was this before uh, now you have problems so this is a functional stateless component again but it it actually has props and it's doing stuff with props and then this shopping list panel this is also a functional stateless component it's got props but it doesn't have any internal state and even though it looks fairly complicated it's not because if you passed in a certain set of properties, you know exactly what it would do based on the out of just what you passed into it. It's got no internal state. Now let's talk about something that does have internal state. That's this product tile. So these individual product tile things here, um, these do have state in them. So, and the reason they have state is it's this dialog box because this dialog box this is actually part of that component and it controls the state controls whether it's open or closed so let's show let's talk about what a component looks like with state 
so I have a, a different syntax of defining this too. It's kind of like an ES6 class. It said product tile extends React component. And now it's a class and I've got attributes on the class or methods on the class. Um, but you can see I define state immediately here. And this state has an open true or false to it. So now in addition to having properties, there are properties that gets passed in here. This also has its own internal state that has nothing to do with Redux at all. So now you have state decoupled from Redux, which is not good because you want you want to be able to reason about your application and say, if I have this state, the application is going to do this. Um, now, I think that arguably it's OK to have state just for like UI interactions. There are some hardliner that there there is some hardliner React people that will say, no, everything should be in Redux. Everything, every UI interaction, like a button clicker or checkbox on or off, that should be inside of Redux. I tend to disagree. I think it complicates your code, and this kind of this kind of segregates these UI interactions down into this handle open, handle close, and this state in here inside of this component. And you're not going to bring all that complication up into Redux. You just don't need to. The things that you need to bring into Redux are like the actual state of the application where you have properties of or products selected on there. Uh, I don't think that like Boolean UI framework uh, things are going to need to be stored inside of Redux. But that's this is a stateful component. So this has its own state that flips on and off when you open. This is when you open this uh, this dialog window. Whoops. When you open this dialog window and when you close it, that state gets set to open or false or true or false. So now let's talk about, um, we, we talked about kind of state uh, full versus stateless. So that's one thing. So you can see again, the syntax is different. You've got to extend the component and then you build state in here. Um, otherwise, you don't even have to do that. If you just import React and you, you pop JSX out of the other side of the function, um, it's going to be interpreted as a uh, React component. So very nice and clean. Um, now, you, you have another type of uh, component here that's a big difference between, and this, this type of component is the actual connected component. I've also heard them called smart components or container components. Um, generally, a lot of people, when they structure their code, they, they put container in here. And these are the ones that are the connected components that are going to be mapped to Redux here with connect. Um, and then they put their dumb components in a directory called components. I've seen that on multiple different projects. So, so that's one common pattern. Um, but this is the other big type of component. And you can see I actually did this as a stateless component. So this could be stateful, though. Um, it could be stateful, but I wrote this as a stateless component. Um, this is a connected component, though. So you see, when I, when I export this, I wrap it with connect. And connect is imported from React Redux. So this is the glue that binds React to Redux. This is the most important type of component when you're talking about Redux, because this is the top level where Redux wires down into React. Um, and then you have two functions here. You have map state to props, which is where the, the top level state comes down and flows down into your application. And then you have map dispatch to props. And this is where your actions are mapped to the Redux dispatcher. Uh, both very important. And then both of these, you're only going to be doing this on the connected component. Um, and interestingly, yeah, the connected component, it can be stateful or stateless. This one happens to be stateless because I always try to only use state on component when it's only absolutely necessary. Otherwise, don't use state on your components. Just make them simple. Make them simple stateless components unless you absolutely have to. So those are those are kind of the the big distinctions between the components. You've got stateless, you've got stateful. So again, this is a stateful component. It's got state. It's got the state object inside of it, which is separate from the Redux 
application state and then you've got your your uh, simple functional stateless and then you've got your connected component which can be stateful or stateless oftentimes they end up being uh, stateful but it's up to you to to make that decision um, I'd say I'd almost argue there's another kind of component which is maybe like a generator uh, so this is a this is kind of just a, a weird example of a thing that you might do um, I made a renderer function as a separate library and I have to import react to make this work but actually it's it's exporting an array of components that's gonna get built into another uh, component so this is kind of like I'd say it's kind of like a factory, uh, kind of like factory pattern, but this is just another sort of like pseudo component. Um, anyway, though, that was that's pretty much it for this video. Just going through the different types of components that I have built while making this website, and um, I hope that this was informative. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and. Uh, Thanks for watching, like it, subscribe it, etc.